Welcome back to the Subscriber Dynasty. This week we have a bye week, uh, but there's a couple of things I want to do. <clears throat> Number one, we're one in three. More on that later. Number two, there's a lot of new people here to the channel, and I kind of wanted to take this time to kind of talk about what the Subscriber Dynasty is. Because mainly, I get to the games, and I play the game, and when the game's over, the video's over. I don't go over much of anything else outside of, you know, my games. The other stuff is for Chef. But this is a dynasty with the subscribers. This is probably one of the few times you're going to see me go to this screen. Or you want to go somewhere and see how everybody else does in the dynasty. Go visit Little Chef, his channel. That's uh, YouTube.com slash Little Chef HPU. His link is in the description. If you're interested in getting into this dynasty... You need to contact Chef. There's a very, very long waiting list. But some of the guys have been in here for a long time. Um, Merc, he's been in here forever. Uh, who else is? Heat of Nights has been in here forever. Packers Rogers has been in here. Dr. Duncan Stein. A lot of these guys, they've been in here for several, several, several seasons. And now on to the one and three thing. I'm going to go over this. The quarterback's got good speed. He's got good throwing. We didn't got a problem there. He's doing, he's doing a pretty good job, really, from what I can tell. Uh, halfbacks. Now, I know he's a 78, this Alex Morris. 95, 92, 95. He should be a lot faster than I feel that he should be. And even Fielder, he's got 91 speed. Even Wagner and on down the line of all these guys. Well, not Reed, but... Or Red, Reed. Looks like Reed to me. No? Reed's got an I in it. That's Red. You know, even he's alright. I can't redshirt any more people. I mean, we got all, pretty much all freshman guys here. But let's go on down here to the uh, to the corners. Now the good speed. Now we shouldn't really between the top guys, D. Harris, Brooks. You know, ninety four and ninety one. Good acceleration, decent acceleration. We shouldn't be getting outrun by people unless somebody's got elite speed. But what's what somebody consider elite speed? Ninety six. So two extra points. It ain't making that much of a difference. Okay. Between 94 and 96. Yeah, there's a few receivers that might have 99. But even that's not a big jump. That's like saying, you know, what's the difference between running a 4-6-40 and like a 4-4-40? Two hundredths of a second? Come on, man. But anyways, let's get over here to their, um, where are we at? Man coverage. It's decent man coverage. 85, 87, 89, 89, 79. I think Seagulls. I mean, freshmen, freshmen. And then we got let's list the guys are seniors. I mean, oh, D. Harris. When we were playing Packers Rogers last game and that one jet route that he got us, I thought, well, maybe a linebacker was guarding him. No, hell no. It's our number one corner, D. Harris, getting burned on a, a jet route or fly route or whatever else everybody else in the nation calls it. But I call it a go route or whatever. When you're just running straight up the field, I interchange a lot of my free safeties and strong safeties. For the most part, I set up my defense for how I like to play call. I like a lot of man covers. The zones, I don't like the way the zones are set up in this game for some reason. They don't work. I, I still think it's too easy to too easy to beat the zones. Um, unless you have a really good defensive line where you can drop people into coverage and, you know, blitz with the four linemen and get pressure on the quarterback. Then the zones work out pretty good, but if you can't do that, they sit there forever and the receivers just run right through the zones, and I think the defenders don't follow them enough as they should be to pass the receiver off to the next guy. That's what you do in a zone. If a guy's running across the middle, you stay with him, and then when the next guy picks him up, you kind of back off him. Uh, I wanted to look at their man coverage and stuff. For my, I think Reese is a, is he, is he a free safety. See, his man coverage is 81. That's not bad. And then zone coverage is 85. So he's interchangeable with Burnett. I can't remember who the guy that's actually a corner and who might actually be a safety. But I think Reese is actually the safety. Um, and I think strong safety. Now, in certain situations, I don't have Ellis on the field because his man coverage sucks. And I can't, you know, run my nickel overstorm blitz or whatever it's called with all, you know, blitz and uh, six people and leave this guy here covering somebody. because That's just not going to work at all. Uh, they have problems covering people enough. But on the plays that he's running a zone, I leave him in there because he's got good zone coverage. And he's the one guy that's got a pick this year out of all the people with man coverage. He's the man uh, that's got one. Now, which brings me to the next thing. 
Now, I thought we had pretty good linebackers. Our, our linebackers are not very good, um, obviously, because we get just stiff-armed and run over like there are a bunch of sissy faces out there. Now, a tackling rating, I probably should have Vaughn in there, and sometimes I think Vaughn is in there and Payne's in its other situations because he's got really good speed. That's, that, that's some of the problem running into, and that's something that I need to, to work on and just leave maybe Payne just rushing off the edge. And then on to the middle linebacker. His tackling's pretty good. Greenwood, we've seen him get stiff-armed in the face. I think we've seen Vaughn do it, too. But, I mean, we got two freshmen. Both these guys are freshmen, so I guess it's just going to take a little bit. Um, and on the cross on the right side is Briggs. And his tackling's a 72. This, this mf -er probably needs to come out of the game. And I probably need to put Vaughn and make Vaughn the starter right here. Take Briggs out, because that, that tackling is really bad. I mean, 10 points makes a difference. Two points doesn't make a whole lot of difference, like they're talking about the speed earlier. There must have been a reason that he's not the starter. Maybe not. Maybe there's not a reason. And I just and I just left him in there. But I think I'm going to make this switch right now. And I'm, I'm going to take Briggs out. And I'm going to put Vaughn in there. I'm going to switch those two right now because that tackling's awful. I was looking at the recruiting. We have 14 seniors, seven on offense, seven on defense. And that doesn't necessarily mean that, you know, they're, they're actually on the field playing. So I know for a fact that we have some places where a senior is not playing. There's one, one. So he's, he's not playing. It's these two guys, a senior and a junior. But overall, it's just a very young team. You know, we're going to get some firepower back. Jones is hurt, by the way. He's uh, injured. He's going to be out for a few weeks, so that'll that's going to help out the offense tremendously. But anyways, I just want to touch on a few things about the whole one and three, and that could be some of our problems. Now, why people can't cover on just straight jet routes, I don't really have a clue because we really haven't been beat by jet routes. Okay, I understand the slant routes, the corner routes, double move stuff. Might be a little hard to cover. A guy takes off sprinting from the line of scrimmage, and you can't stay with him? Come on, man. Come on with that mess. On to the, uh, the recruiting. I'm not going to show the recruiting. It's still way too early in the year for all that stuff. We should have an offensive lineman coming that's good. I got more defensive linemen coming. I have more corners coming. I got one guy that's 89-man coverage and, you know, 90-plus speed. And I can't remember exactly what it is. And we're like 18, 1,800 points ahead and just pulling away. So that guy's going to be a shoe-in to help out. And, of course, I think we're losing – um, two corners. I think I got two or three guys that are seniors. So we're losing a bunch in the corners. Um, but we should have a couple guys coming. We need to even look at guys that I redshirted for last year. Um, because there's some people there. We got our quarterback coming back next year. He's doing fine. With the speed stuff with the running back, because I was watching, I was watching Chef's game. Those guys were so fast. And I was like, why, why do my guys not that fast? They just look slow. And I, I don't, I wonder if my deal is glitched. Because of the because of the sliders, which is something that we changed um, at the beginning of season six, I think. Anyways, I just want to cover a couple of things. You know, what's the what's the problem with the one and three? And I mean, it's still early in the season. We still have a chance. Let's do that before we um, end this episode. I don't want it to get too long of me just sitting here rambling. But where is the conference standings? Let's go take a peek at that real quick. We're in last place, but we still got to play everybody up here. Now, I don't know if Florida's got to play Missouri. They might. and Or maybe they've already played. I don't know. But if Florida loses in another game, and we beat the rest of these teams, South Carolina, Vanderbilt, Georgia, Kentucky, and Missouri, then we have a chance to get to the SEC National, Champ not, SEC National Championship game? What the hell? We have a chance to get to the conference championship game, as I'm trying to say. And salvaging a 1-3 start to going to the SEC Championship game would be a pretty good start. I just want to go over those couple of things and to let all the new guys know that are subscribers to the channel what the Subscriber Dynasty is all about. And then kind of talk about what's up with the 1-3. I appreciate everybody watching. We'll see you at the next game.